And we are back. Pokemon Black, Hardcore Nuzlocke. It all comes down to this. Uh, Team Plasma gets this. He is very angry that N lost to us and is going on a mad ramp. Our Pokemon do get healed, but we do not get to move them around or shift them. So we are forced to throw out Haxorus first here, um, which is good and bad. It, I mean, it helps me from overthinking it. We're just going to have to work with what we have. We are down Amoongus, our big tanky uh, grass poison mushroom there that looks like a Pokeball. So five versus six. I guess this is just going to rant here. It all comes down to this. We either stop him and beat him right here for the win to complete the Nuzlocke or we lose everything, everything that we've worked for leading up to this moment. It comes down to us versus Getsis. And he starts with his own Cofagrigus. The coffin comes down. So this is it. There is, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use everyone to their max potential. I'm not going to like try and swap around and salvage as best I can. I'm going to give everything I have. And given that I'm going to swords dance, get that attack up. Cofagrigus' defense is ungodly. So he doesn't have Will-O-Wisp. I don't think he has Toxic. So if that could miss, oh my gosh, that is so massive that is so massive we're gonna go ahead and use the dragon claw Ooh, i could go for two swords dance because i don't think one dragon claw even with one sword stance is gonna bring him down because he's so beefy so i'm gonna go for the second sword stance and because the toxic missed i think we are allowed to do that i think that's okay um the Toxic does connect here. So my beautiful Haxorus Guillotine is on a ticking timer here. There goes 10. Dragon Claw. This potentially... Oh, you stud muffin. I should have Swords Dance. I should have Swords Dance. I should have seen the Protect coming. That would have been the biggest play ever. He goes for the second protect, it fails. Can this finish off the Cofagrigus? If not, we are gonna be hurting with the Toxic. Okay. So huge misplay there because of the protect. I should have seen that coming. So the Toxic is gonna to kill us a turn earlier. Well, I guess the Toxic is gonna to kill us the same. But does it even matter because this Whoever goes first wins here, and Hydreigon's speed is literally one higher than Haxorus normally. This could go either way. Whoever attacks first wins, and go. Oh my god, can you live with like one HP? I don't think so, because his special is maxed out, and our special defense is atrocious. So we only get one off of the Haxorus play. The Hydreigon comes down. I think we go with Sock here. It's hard to get a free swap in, and I'm fairly certain that we will one-shot with close combat um, due to our raw damage here. Uh, it's just how much damage are we going to take in the process. Dragon Pulse, that's going to do a ton. Okay, we hold on. Close combat comes down. It is now a 4v4. If this kills. Okay. Whew. Okay, it is now a 4v4. Does he throw out something that Sock is faster than? Yes, he does. I'm pretty sure Sock is faster than Buffalant. Big old Buffalo here. And that will potentially get another kill because it's super effective and does tons of damage. Okay, that is fantastic. That feels good. A little fadeaway crit there just for fun. We are going to maximize Sock's damage output here. And Hydreigon was the one that was faster than Sock. So living through that is absolutely phenomenal. Electros comes down is so cool because it is an electric type with levitate, meaning it has nothing that is super effective here. But... 
with a black belt, close combat is still going to hit for a million damage here. Um, and we should be faster. So we have the potential. I don't know if this will kill, but we know that it's going to have massive damage. And we know that Sock is dead the moment someone touches him. Oh, my Lord. Oh, that was, well, that was game right there if that would have killed. So Electros is 100% getting a full restore here. Oh, baby, this could be the moment. So I actually only have three. I know it shows my Amoongus is alive because it got healed, but it is actually dead. Um, so let me think real quick here. Electros has Wild Charge, which is electric. It has Acrobatics, really good flying type move. Um, ah, oh, Crackers, I can't remember what else it had. I know it has those two moves. It probably is. Uh, so Wild Charge, but Wild Charge is physical, so that might not actually one-shot my Turtley if I do the, the Rock play, the Shell Smash. And real quick, what's his other two Pokemon? He has Bisharp and um... Oh dang, dude, if that killed, we would have won the game. It did not, and now we're put into a really tough spot. I'm gonna go all in on the Caracosta. And he's 100% going to use Full Restore, right? If he doesn't use Full Restore, that was the biggest brain move I've ever seen. Okay. We get the Shell Smash, which is now going to give us plus two special, plus two physical, and plus two speed. But then it's going to lower our defenses. So I, I don't think we can kill it in one shot with the surf here. We could try to do rock slide and get a flinch, but I swear if rock slide misses, I'm just gonna lose my mind. So I'm gonna go for the ensure damage. We are faster. If Caracosta can live, it has to live this. It has to, but I don't think it's going to. Oh my god, dude, are you serious right now? Oh my gosh. Okay, that kind of helps with the fact that Sock did not finish the job. Oh my god, in a perfect world, Getsis uses a full restore again. I use Shell Smash and then Sweep. But if he doesn't use a full restore, as, we, as we've seen before, and I use Shell Smash, he's going to kill me. So given that, I, I'm just going to have to go Surf here. Okay, he didn't use the full restore. If we did Shell Smash, we would have died. We get the kill, and this is effectively 2v2, even though Karakost is still alive. We do have the Shell Bell, and we get 2 HP back, which is huge. Seismitoad comes down. <sighs> okay, again, there is this incredible risky play with Rock Slide to where we try to chip him and flinch, but it's just not going to do a lot. So we're going to go with the Surf again, get the insured damage down, and um, then we are probably going to die. But if we can get a lot of damage, if we crit now, Seismitoad does die, I think, but... If we don't crit, I do believe this is it for um, for our turtle here. Wait, in what world is Seismitoad still faster? But Muddy Water misses? Holy crackers. Okay. So Seismitoad is somehow faster than our double speed turtle. 
but he went for Muddy Water, which is like Surf, but with a 15% accuracy mischance. And then it also has a chance of lowering your accuracy, which is exactly why you run Surf and not Muddy Water. Um, but that might be it because we can use Aqua Jet, which is now double buffed from our Shell Smash. And I think that can snipe from that range, if I'm not mistaken. Now, if this doesn't, he's going to go into full restore range and we just played ourselves. But if this kills, oh my god. <sighs> that is so unfortunate. That is the second Pokemon that's lived on basically one HP. So, I mean, I can really complain about that, but to be fair, Seismitoad should have never been that low, you know? Or, um, the Muddy Water should have hit, so we shouldn't have even been in that position to where we could have pulled that playoff, so... It happened where it's down to a 2v2. Um, I'm pretty sure Seismitoad's gonna get a full restore here. But on the off chance, he doesn't. Oh my god, he didn't get a full restore, so we just need to eat this. Okay, that's really good damage, but Grass Knock comes down, which is basically low kick, but with a Grass Typing, and it's special instead of physical. But we now come down to a 2v1. Bisharp is Dark Steel. Has the potential to, to one-shot me here with Night Slash. But if this Will-O-Wisp gets off and it stunts his damage, that's basically GG. Please live, buddy. Please live. No crit. Please live. You have so much defense. Oh my god, another eight. Please connect. Please connect. Please, please, please. Um, please. Please. The coffin from downtown, it connects. Are you serious right now? Are you absolutely serious? Bisharp's damage is now cut in half. We are going to die. We are going to die. That is a conclusion. It is now a 1v1. <sighs> Stunfisk. <laughs> the bottom dweller comes down. Shout out to Nightly the band. Saw them in concert. Really good. This is it. It is a one. I know it says it's a two v one, but if if Stunfisk dies, we lose the Nuzlocke because um, um, Amungus is actually dead. <sighs> okay, real quick. Final one v one. That burn is potentially GG. Um, but let me, okay, we have really good, that's what I want to look at here real quick. The defense, we have 112 defense, 116 special defense. We are so much slower. Our special attack is much higher than our attack. Now, his physical defense is much higher than his special, but, oh my god, what am I saying here? We have revenge, which is four times super effective. This should be GG. Uh, we don't have the highest attack, but 60, especially if uh, if he hits us first and we live, Revenge will 100% one shot. And we should live because of the burn. So unless Bisharp Hail Marys a, a, like a Night Slash that crits and somehow kills us, we will lose. But I think this Revenge will do it. No crit. Keep it clean. Keep it safe. No crit. No crit. Beautiful. Revenge is proc'd. Double damage. Four times super effective. And is that GG? It is GG. It comes down to the last Pokemon, the electric ground fish named Knightly. Stunfisk takes home the game. I am beside myself. Getsis is defeated. And the Nuzlocke is complete. Oh my gosh, dude. I am... Dude, those two... The the Turtle and uh, Caracosta and um, 
the sock living on a sliver. Haxorus absolutely carrying the team until the very end where it meets another dragon that shows him who's boss. The Hydreigon is absolutely amazing. And that does it, guys. Oh my gosh. I am just, man, I was... I was so worried. There's N looking like a stud. Just so worried. So scared. That is just a monster double battle there. Coming off of champion N and then get sis. That is just an incredibly difficult Elite Four run. I so real quick, final thoughts on Pokemon Black. I mean, I had, you know, some issues with it, with the fourth gym just being incredibly difficult, but I will say I absolutely enjoyed how difficult this game was, how hard it was in comparison. And I love the the things that it did. Like, even if some people don't like the animation change or the fact that there's no Pokemon carrying over from the previous gens, that it's all new Pokemon. Some of the designs are pretty bad, but some of the designs are super cool. I mean, look at Hydreigon. That is incredible. Um... Haxorus is really cool. I think I, I really respect everything that they did. A lot of quality of life changes with like when you give potions, it doesn't swap screens. It just gives everyone. Obviously, you have the physical versus special attack. Um, the storyline is fantastic. The characters in this game are really, really good. Love the region itself. So uh, it doesn't have any garbage HMs that you have to move around like you did in uh, Platinum and Gen 4. So a lot of really good things going for it, and I really enjoyed it. It is very difficult in comparison, but that really suits a Nuzlocke because that's what you want. You want a challenge. Um, so yeah, I am just so excited that we pulled that off. At some point, I would have gone back and uh, done another, would have done a revenge tour this time, not just a second chance, but um, I'm so glad we pulled it off, and now I am so excited to move on to either Pokemon X or Y, and I think that's just going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, let all of that sink in. With everything being said and done, I will call it there. As always, guys, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and I will catch you on the flip. Peace.